Hello, uh, my name is Iyas, and like uh, Dina said, um, I'm a Palestinian born in the diaspora. I come from the West Bank, and God, it's so always not so easy to speak about what's happening in Palestine. I actually cried in the movie. Um, so yeah, I'm born in the diaspora. I have family in the West Bank. I remember one of the things, I mean, I visited when I was a child, but um, I remember meeting my uncle for the first time when I was 40 years old, and uh, we hugged and we both cried for, um, I would say, like, long, long, many minutes. Um, I also like to put things in perspective when it matters, so I like to joke around and say, like, people, when they speak to people and they meet them for the first time and they ask them, like, where are you from? The answer is one word, a name of one country. For us, it's a story. Mm -hmm. You have to, especially if you if meet a Palestinian, mm -hmm. it's like, are you 67 or 48? And it's like, no, you actually, Jerusalem is part of it is 67. That's where my mom is, and my dad is from, you know, the 48 side. And you know, they moved like, you know, the Huris. Uh, they moved to Berzeit, and then, you know, and for example, she mentioned the, um, the Gaza um, is 70 percent refugees. It is so interesting that some villages that some of them now I work with Gaza. I mean, very like you know closely because I have a, a campaign it's called Project Over Palestine, and we're actually on the ground in Gaza. They are from areas that are minutes from my village. And I keep telling people like when they probably they don't care. It's like, I could have been one of those being bombed. I don't know why the Haganah stopped just minutes before they went into sort of my town. Um, so yeah, and back to be you being indigenous, um, because well, I speak with Reza, I know it by heart now. And it's like, oh, are you going to the Hamad uh, area? It's like, and there's like, oh, you're just like living with us. Um, they call it like Muatlin and Muhajir. Like the indigenous, they call it Muatlin, like citizen. Muhajir is the um, refugee. See, kind of like it's not exactly means like refugee, like Lajir, the uh, immigrant. Yeah. And also, whenever I have the chance, I would like to um, put also things in perspective. Like, Palestine is small. It's 27,000 uh, square kilometers. And, like, the towns literally are minutes away from each other. But because of the ongoing Nakba that started, of course, in the late 1947s throughout 1948, and people think, they say, oh, the Nakba of 1948, well, the ethnic cleansing continued throughout the 1949 to 50, 51, 52. And so let me tell you, like, about a million and a half inhabitants of Palestine. Now we have so many different um, experiences and so many different um, places that we live and so for example you have the people um who were like um her um sabrine her family um lost their homes and they were ethnically cleansed in the 1948 and became what people call right now israel uh, there's still remaining about two million people that are living as second class citizens of israel not even second i would say probably 10 you know class uh, citizens of israel um, and then you have the refugees that um, ended up in Lebanon refugee camps, uh, West Bank refugee camps, Gaza refugee camps, Syria, and Jordan. You have now the West Bank and Gaza, and it's Jerusalem that's still considered internationally as the occupied territories. So they're probably going to change soon under Trump. Um, uh, so you have Jerusalem was annexed in 1980 by Israel, and they decided it's part of Israel proper. Um, these guys were given IDs, so they're not even, they're not Palestinians, and then they're Israelis, they have a Jerusalem ID. I think you have it, right? Yeah. It's a document that allows you to travel, or not? It's like, a, you know the green card? Like a, it's like, a like you're resident there, so you have to pay taxes you know, to the Israeli government. You do get medical uh, benefits and, and stuff like that. But you can't vote. 
and you're not a citizen so if you like m me I have the American citizenship if they find out that I have it they'll take away my ID they recall it an ID which is the blue ID so you are free to travel around but you can't live outside the Jerusalem restriction so when I got married I moved to the West Bank so I was so scared for them to find out because my ID would be taken because I work in Jerusalem so I have to commute every day from the West Bank to the J Jerusalem and if they they know about it then uh, they'll take away my ID and I can't visit Jerusalem I can't be I can't live in Jerusalem I can't live, my family live in Jerusalem it's a very intricate apartheid yeah. system oh, yeah. that is is so institutionalized and documented I you know people in the West don't necessarily understand that but our IDs our Hawiyas even the license plates on our cars uh, it all determines the access that we have to our ancestral land um, and you know it's apartheid um, yeah so um I just wanted to finish off like, and of course we now have the West Bank and Gaza. West Bank is under military occupation since 1967, like a complete apartheid military occupation. Gaza was like that until 2005 when they pulled out, but they came back again starting from 2007 and they put it under blockade and now back to a military occupation. Um, so a million and a half people. Uh, back in 1948, now we have so many IDs fragmented, live all over the place. Of course, there's the people like who live in the United States, Europe, and uh, South America, the Gulf area, and um, yeah, that's the uh, result of the um, uh, Israeli project, basically. So, Nora, I know um, UES. 